Hello everyone. Very good day. Let us take an object on which I apply a force, an external force. So obviously what will happen, the consequence will be, this object will start to move and it will experience an acceleration of A. And we know by Newton's second law, this uh, acceleration will be directly proportional to the motive force impressed so f is equal to ma and this mass we call it as the inertial mass or we can even say this is the inertia to the linear acceleration in the similar way suppose i take a beam uh, cantilever beam and if i apply the same force the external force f what will happen to this beam whether this beam will start to accelerate no this beam will bend like this so some amount of deflection will happen and this deflection depends upon the magnitude of this force but anyway this geometry the cross section of this particular beam will also produce some amount of resistance and that resistance we call it as moment of inertia that resistance we call it as the moment of inertia <coughs> and particularly uh, we call uh, this resistance as the area moment of inertia area moment of inertia is the property of a geometry to resist the bending that happens on any beam so that resistance we call it as area moment of inertia and this depends upon the geometry in a particular geometry where we take the reference axis also it it matters so this particular property we call it as area moment of inertia it is nothing but the measurement of uh, cross sections ability to resist the bending okay and it depends upon the geometry as well for every cross section it will vary if you have a rectangular cross section it will have uh, one kind of resistance if you have a circular cross section it will have another magnitude of resistance is it possible to measure the resistance yes it is possible because we have already introduced you a quantity which is called as integration of y dA uh, which we denote, denote it as the first moment of area. Similarly, if you want to measure the uh, moment of inertia or the resistance to bending of any cross section then we need to find out a new quantity which is called as y integration of y square dA which we technically call it as the second moment of area or the area moment of inertia. And similarly, it is not necessary that all the time the material will bend, sometimes the object may get twisted. So even if we apply a twisting load, the geometry will, um, the geometry will resist it and that moment of inertia, that resistance we call it as the polar moment of inertia. So polar moment of inertia is nothing but the measurement of the geometrical resistance offered by any body towards the twisting. And this also depends upon the geometry. Uh, for every geometry it varies. If you have a rectangular cross section, the resistance will be different. If you have a circular cross section, the resistance will be different. And again, is it possible to measure? Yes, it is also possible to measure. This quantity we call it as integration of r square into dA. The dA is the small element that we take. And r is nothing but the radius of a small element under consideration from the neutral axis and sometimes when we apply an external force on any object the object may again may tend to rotate so that kind of a resistance towards the rotation we or the resistance towards the angular acceleration we call it as mass moment of inertia every body will possess some amount of mass moment of inertia depending upon the axis that we choose it depends upon the geometry so the resistance to the angular acceleration or the rotation is called as mass moment of inertia thank you